Hello here, this is Stan in the darkest updates of links, but you know, not in the not in, not in the sense that there are bad news, but just that I'm in a very different place today. I hope you can hear me okay. Please uh, tell me in the chat if there is any issue with the the live. Uh, it's uh, we are you know we are in for another very dangerous live update, so the setup might break. Uh, especially that I'm not in a in the office uh, as you can see. Uh, it's it's great. We have a, a good session today. I have many many things to share. It certainly has been a very busy time since we did this last thing in August. So today it's really um, you know this live update is going to be just my thoughts uh, and uh, what what has been happening and what we can share with you. There is going to be a formal uh, uh, update of what we what we said today uh, tomorrow. Uh, it is very late, so I am in Taiwan. I'm in Taipei. There is the skyline behind me, um, and uh, I've been working with the with the manufacturing site and the Lynx uh, team here for quite some time. Uh, I will also be back later, but uh, yeah, many many things to share. Uh, I don't even know where to start. Um, uh, you have to know that uh, the, the, so the manufacturing certainly started already, um, but as you can see, we didn't ship in September because we're at the end of the month and uh, there's been uh, no update on shipping. I want to immediately address that. Um, we are going to ship, uh, I have a date. We are going to ship the first units for sure now. Um, on between the 10th and the 15th of November. So I know it's a delay, uh, but there are some very good upsides to, to this. And we are going to mitigate that with the deliveries of uh, other stuff around the headset before. The first thing I want to say is that the delay is completely uh, due to crisis on the semiconductor. And one of the one of the challenges we had to face is that there's been a, uh, we had some delay in August because we couldn't uh, supply the chip responsible for the memory in the headset. And uh, the headset has been advertised, Lynx R1, as a six gigabyte, uh, you know, RAM uh, headset. And we uh, had to upgrade that because the, the supplier of the memory chip stopped producing without really telling us about that. So the good news for the user is that all the units that are going to be shipped have an upgraded RAM of eight gigabytes. So we switched from six gigabyte to eight. There is like a $5 difference on the bomb cost, which is like the, the price we pay for the, the cheap. We're going to take that, that price on, a, uh, on ourselves uh, you know, for uh, as, as an excuse for this, this delay once again. But we had to change many electronics parts and even even some, some mechanical parts in the headset to be sure that we can supply everything, not only for the Kickstarter and the first pre-orders, but also for the, um, you know, the mass production units in, later in 2023. And, you know, the problem, I mean, the interesting problem with Lynx is that we need to uh, we need to produce everything we sell, and we sell a lot, and uh, we need to make sure that we have all the right components. And it's constant war with suppliers uh, here in Asia, and this is why I had to go there to make sure that both you know the quality of the device and the relationship with the suppliers and the manufacturer were okay. You have to imagine that. Uh, we are we have 20 people now in Paris at the office like the engineers working on software uh, and uh, hardware conception but they are like between 40 and 60 depending on the days uh, people uh, working at link for links here in in Taipei so I'm going to share with you a, a photo uh, yeah this is the this is this is the Lynx team, uh, the manufacturing Lynx team dedicated to bring you those devices. So I'm in the middle. I'm going to post this photo later in HD. Maybe you're not seeing everything, um, but 
there is certainly a lot of very talented people, both on the Paris conception team and here in, in Taipei with our manufacturer, uh, making sure that we can uh, deliver those, those, those units. We are really playing with the same tools uh, that the very big companies are using. I, I cannot give any, any names, but we are uh, in the same factory as uh, very important uh, tablets or a notebook or, or phones. So it's, it's both new for Paris and the, proce and the process of manufacturing a VR device, like a, you know, a mixed reality device is certainly also a first for uh, our Taiwanese uh, partners and, and suppliers. So it's, um, it, it was a tough challenge, but now we have a clear shipping date for the first units. So I'm, you know, it's a, uh, it certainly is a lot of uh, emotion for me uh, because I saw like the, the first Unix units being assembled and certified. Uh, we, we passed a lot of certification. I think we passed more certification than the current headsets actually on the market, uh, including biocompatibility uh, materials for everything in contact with the face, which was not the case for some other uh, headsets. Um, well, there's there's been a lot on the manufacturing side, but just I want to tell you that we are sorry for this delay, but uh, we are doing everything we can. Uh, we are uh, meeting. Uh, we are having all those long hour meetings in in rooms with uh, supplier, making sure that. Uh, uh, we can have all those things in time for the factory to build uh, the ordered units of our users. So there's this RAM upgrade. We changed some other components in the headset, but they are not. Uh, it, it's not going to be reflected in the specs. But basically, when we change something from uh, you know the initial prototypes you might have seen in uh, in trade shows or uh, when you came to our office in Paris, for some of you. Um, Everything is just going to be to be better, but really the specs that is that is going to change on our website is the this upgrade on on the RAM. So it means that you can probably we haven't made measurements yet, but you can probably have more complex 3D scenes. You can uh, uh, put some more load uh, from uh, the number of triangles in your in your 3D scenes and all that. We're we're going to make tests and and re and uh, share the reports uh, about like the limitation of. Uh, the number of lights and triangle, depending on the, if you're using Unity or Unreal, uh, we, we'll uh, we'll share that with you later on, probably by the uh, by the end of October, and if not, uh, beginning of November. Um, but okay, so since we're late, um, we are still going to deliver some stuff, at least for the developers. And uh, it's my pleasure to tell you and uh, congratulations for the the team here that we. Uh, uh, we finally finished, uh, uh, I would say, a 1.0 version of our OpenXR SDK. It was a joint effort between Qualcomm uh, and us. Uh, so I'm really uh, thankful for uh, some people at Qualcomm that, that helped us on uh, implementing our lens distortion and, and all that and made that possible. Um, and on October 10, on our website, we're going to post uh, the the first, uh, the first SDK, the first uh, Unity and OpenXR, uh, so native OpenXR and Unity SDK. Unreal is going to come later this year, but it's not, it's, it's not completely finished. We are, we still have to iron out some, uh, some stuff in this 3D engine. So stay, you know, stay tuned on October 10. That's our, uh, that's our date for the, the public release uh, of our first SDK to app developers. We have a good list of the, uh, developers that are interested in uh, in developing on the platform, and uh, we'll show you some videos of what you can expect uh, to to work on uh, with us. Uh, before I show you the rest uh, and what my software team uh, shared, I want to have a quick word about the competition uh, because so many people uh, this last day while I was either in, in Paris or uh, in Taipei, asked me, well, did you see the Pico new stuff? Did you see the meta leaks and all that? Uh, yes, yes, we, we, we saw that. We, uh, we, we tried to analyze and li li like some people online did. Uh, and I want, to, I want to share with you something because 
as you can see, more and more headsets are uh, marketed as mixed reality headset. And that uh, this idea that we had more than three years ago that the truth for AR to the mass market and the consumer is going to be video pass-through instead of, you know, optical see-through devices like, for example, HoloLens, because of many things technical and uh, and uh, on the price of these things. So I'm, I'm really happy to see that we were right, we had the right intuition and that uh, all those big companies are also helping us educate uh, users uh, to, to mix reality the way we are doing it. Um, about the way we are doing it, I think Lynx provides something quite different from what I saw from the and, and tried from uh, the other new headsets that are going to hit the market uh, approximately at the same time as, as us. Um, I, this is why I want to come back with you to uh, one of our um, one of our videos we we made some time ago. Um, let's see. You know, we, we on our YouTube channel we have a the I think our most viewed uh, video is from last year where uh, we have this see through um, view. Let me share it with you here. Yeah. So I want I want to come back uh, to this video for a, a, a few minutes, and this video is very important because, well, it was it was a, a long time ago for for us. Uh, there is no, for example, there is no end tracking in in this scene running. This just basically six stuff, uh, and and some three D objects uh, like planets that are floating in space. But the very important thing in, in this video to come back to is the left part of it, the the, the thing on on the left here the peripheral vision and the alignment we have with, with the real world is really what is going to make Lynx very special. So I would say we are, we are not really uh, going to have, you know, to outspec the others in VR, in virtual reality, but we certainly are going to provide, I think, a, a more comprehensive, immersive experience for augmented and mixed reality because of this, the, the way you can use the headset without the VR cover and, and get back your full 200 degrees field of view with augmentation on the central 90 degrees circular. And you can see that the colors and uh, you know, the, the, the pass-through latency and alignment is, is pretty much what is needed to achieve that. And I, I think other headsets are not using a, a, a true stereo RGB feed. And so it, I, I don't know how really it's going to, to translate to perception of the color space uh, and the, the spatial alignment. But I think we have something that is going to be more compelling than uh, other headsets. Also something that we, we have is that our lens makes our headset slimmer, just like pancake lenses. But, um, you know, compared to pancake and friendly lenses, the clover lens that we use uh, doesn't have the same kind of aberration that you find in other lenses. Uh, which means that the full field of view is is clear, where uh, usually you lose a lot of uh, spatial uh, spatial pixel density. Uh, I mean, spatial resolution when you look, uh, you know, in in the outer uh, field of view uh, above thirty degrees, uh, you lose a lot of the resolution. And our lens has other kind of aberration, and I would say limitation. But I think we made an interesting choice uh, for the image clarity, both in VR and AR. Um, we certainly don't lose as much light as pancake lenses, so our images will have much better contrast. So I'm really curious to have your feedback on the, you know, from people who had the demo of the headset, but uh, when you get the, the units in, uh, in November. So yeah, the, the peripheral vision um, and the combination with six dof and hand tracking is really going to trick your brain. It's really going to be uh, a new step for, you know, augmented reality, which is something we will all agree to call mixed reality basically and i think in the future you know when when i'm being asked about that i think uh the um, the consumer you know the uh, the the user the future user of, in 2023 and 2024 will probably never know about vr or ar they will just they will just know mixed reality this is probably the the, the term that is going to you know hit the consumer and um, they will, they will, they won't even hear about virtual and augmented reality. 
uh, it's just going to be those are just going to be subset of, of mixed reality and you can see even like the big the big names like uh, Meta or Apple or uh, the others they are all changing their marketing to to this so again I want I, I want to to say that I'm very happy and I, I don't see them as a threat because to finish on the competition all our competitors today that are putting headsets on the market and ecosystems are social media companies and they have a business model which is clearly not the same as ours as we're a, a european company um, having a more i would say traditional approach to our business model we sell a headset you get a headset and a, an ecosystem you use it if you want to or not you're not forced into anything because the product you bought is yours and we we try to to you know to explain that to political powers uh, especially in europe and and we're starting to find a, a very good echo here uh, so there there are many things at play when you buy a headset or when your company wants to acquire a headset there is of course the technical specification which is something we try to do our best and this headset with the delays we have was you know developed some time ago already but we're really proud of uh, what we could achieve with such a team i think we really compete on the technical specification but there is also the business model behind that and why maybe some other headsets are so uh, inexpensive or cheap you you know i think now more and more users are st starting to see that uh, those headsets are sold as a loss and it's not you buying a meta headset it's basically meta buying you and, and or, or pico for you know uh, for the same stuff with the the biden's company so I think we really have a we still have a, a strong uh, a strong play here a, a strong advantage that we're going to use later on this year. Um, I want to also say that our communication is going to be much better as we finally have someone who will arrive at the same time of the devices. In November, we have a communication officer. You will uh, you will meet her. Uh, I hope more than you 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 meet me. Uh, she she will she will take care of uh, of our communication around the, around that because. Uh, you know we're doing those those YouTube update, but uh, we're we, we're going to upgrade and be more professional as we're as we're growing. So those those are the, like the, the main things I, I wanted to to share on the broader uh, aspect of thing. I, I also now want to share with you what you need to expect for software, uh, and after that we uh, can move to a Q and A session. It's currently more than 1 a.m. here in Taipei, so I might, I might not be, you know, really, really sharp, but um, uh, I, I will try to answer all your questions before before going to bed. Um, so I, I will share with you now some videos about the uh, what my software team uh, sent me, uh, you know, from Paris uh, about what you can uh, what you can expect of the first experience you're going to have uh, later on. So let's. Let's get back to uh, our videos. Yeah. All right. So. So this video, I'm going to pause it. Uh, this is this is one of our uh, engineers that made a. Oh, I have the hard time decoding the. The video sorry i'm going to restart it but basically uh we told you that we are compatible now with mixed reality toolkit and the mixed reality toolkit is the the way developer used to uh, develop for hololens platform and we've been working with the hololens developer team to have uh the, the sdk the basically their sdk working on the on the links headset so for, from anyone that is coming from the hololens world uh, you have to know that now we can uh, you you can use MRTK both in AR and VR in our system. Um, I see that my my uh, computer has a hard time uh, decoding the the video. Uh, I think my poor laptop has too too much pressure. Uh, I, 
can't, I can't change the bitrate live, but... Ugh. So I will get back to this video la later uh, during the live, but basically we have, uh, there is a sample in our SDK where you can use the Mixed Reality Toolkit from Microsoft and change between AR and, and VR during runtime, thanks to uh, the OpenXR uh, layer API that we, that we integrated. So this is a mock-up of our uh, App Store. This is this is this was very early work, but we have basically this this catalog of app you'll be able to launch. Uh, one of the cool thing I want to mention about that is we try to we try to innovate, and I think we I think the the web is going to play a huge part in, in how content is distributed uh, on on links and on other and hopefully on other uh, mixed reality platforms. So the the store is actually uh, a web app. So what you're see, what you're going to see for the store is actually hosted in uh, in the Volvic browser. It would be hosted on the you know in a pure HTML uh, web page. But the very cool thing, something we're going to bring to uh, uh, developers is if uh, you know because our um, because our app store is a web view, you will have like the download button to, to download your, your application onto the headset. And next to this button, we created a, 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 another uh, option um, for, for developers to share things with, with users. Usually on the mobile app store, what you have is you have pictures or video of an application. And it's great for 2D experiences, but we, we, we we reflect on that, and when you are buying a VR game, it, it's not enough, you know, to see pictures or video. And we wanted to give developers a new way to, uh, you know, uh, give a preview to to the user. And there is going to be a button, like I don't know, I, we we don't know the verb or the the way we're going to 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 put on on this, but it's going to be a WebXR preview. And if the developer uh, made a small WebXR export of some of the stuff he wants to share uh, for the user to try, like for example, to try the environment or some game dynamics that is going to that is that is used in the in the game or in the application. Then you know WebXR is going to be a great platform to share those previews and 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 this kind of content from the App Store. So not only you will have the page where you see the pictures and, and the videos. But you can also now try those VR and AR experiences directly from the store if the developer uh, made an ex a small export of the uh, of a WebXR scene where uh, you can demo the you can demo the app. So this is why we really bet on uh, WebXR, and we are working with the the team that is working on the Volvic brother. There, it's a, a Spanish company called Igalia, and. Um, our brother is going to be a first class citizen on the headset because it will also be basically our gateway to uh, the app store and the content distribution. Um, all right. So that was, um, you know, that was for the, the app store. Something else we can share with you today is um, there is a there is a small app for uh, onboarding, so the so we are going to post all those videos uh, online. But there is a small robot that we developed uh, and is going to guide the user to use a mixed reality headset. So the first time you, the first time you put on the headset, you will see this weird little robot uh, explaining to the user how to interact with a hand with a hand tracking first headset. Uh, so this is a preview of the of the application. It's going to to be very very cute. Hopefully very effective uh, onboarding for the the new users. Um, so yeah, that was that was the small updates we small updates we wanted to share. Um, the last word I wanted to share with you is the the controllers. We are still working on these subjects. It's still a priority for us. Uh, and so far, um, we made the most progress um, with the project we have uh, internally in terms of uh, architecture and direction. 
So there were like many paths for us to deliver a headset for Lynx R1. Uh, and one of them was uh, Finch. So we're, we're still uh, working with them. Uh, but we also started working internally uh, and also talked to other partners. And so far, uh, Finch and the internal project we have at Lynx have the more chances to uh, to hit the market. Uh, so the controllers are going to come after the first deliveries of the Lynx R1 headsets. So in the meantime, we are also making sure that it can work with Steam VR based controllers, just like uh, uh, we told you, you can already use it with the with the Valve uh, index controllers, for example, if you if you have them at home. So it's it, controller projects is a is a separate project from the headset. We're all you know for the internal project, we're also uh, trying to have the uh, the controllers compatible with also future version of uh, of the headsets we're we're going to make in the future. Um, so basically, uh, sorry, I, I talk a lot. Um, this this was the the things I, I wanted to share with the the community today. Uh, thank you for you know watching. We can have some time for a Q and A. Q and A. I didn't take a look at the chat. Uh, I oh wow, you certainly ask a lot of questions. Um, okay, uh, I I don't know where to start, but if you have uh, any question in the chat, we can we can go on now. I will try to. I will try to rewind a little bit. Um, will there be stereo pass through in Steam VR mode? For instance, the Reality Mixer Steam VR overlay places a cube. Yeah. So, yeah, we're um, we're working. We've been discussing with Valve team um, about content and uh, how we can leverage also Steam on Linux R1. And basically, the answer we got from them was get back to us once uh, OpenXR is implemented and the headset is conformant with the standard. And now it's it, it's here. We have, a, we have a stable and conformant OpenXR uh, runtime and SDK. So we're reaching back to them and see, uh, uh, you know, before the end of the year, if we can work on something together and make sure that we can leverage this team ecosystem and their work around OpenXR. It, it, it you know nothing to share really today, but just to tell you that we're we're definitely working on it, and it's our it, it, it's in front of us. Um, how many backers will get their links R one in November ten uh, second week of uh, November? It's still uncertain. We are going to have the first few hundred devices. It's going to depend on the yield, but I expect uh, I expect a few a few hundreds already in November. And the rest uh, in uh, in December. My my goal is to have as many Kickstarter users uh, delivered before Christmas. That that's really our our priority today, uh, and it it starts to roll out in November. Question: uh, Is the Lynx Unity SDK based upon or very similar to Qualcomm Spaces SDK? It's a good question. I forgot to mention that part in in the, in the session. But we are working with Qualcomm now to put Snapdragon Spaces on top of our OpenXR runtime. It will be optional. It, it certainly will be optional for all developers. But for some of you who wants to do advanced tracking, you will be able to leverage the Snapdragon Spaces ecosystem. And I think the Qualcomm team, I haven't really tried the latest uh, Spaces uh, iteration, but it's certainly going to bring a lot of uh, good value for uh, developers who wants to do anything from uh, plane tracking to 3D object detection and uh, and tracking. So it's going to be like a a, a layer on top of uh, OpenXR, like a like a plugin you you can use during runtime, but it's going to be optional, and it's probably going to be uh, shipped in the SDK as uh, at the same time uh, as the devices ship. So probably around November, uh, we'll have finished this work, this integration work with with Qualcomm. Uh, same thing is is going to happen with uh, Viforia. So you might know Viforia. Viforia is a SDK for um, they're they're very good for object tracking. And uh, we're going to uh, in have a native integration with Viforia. Uh, hopefully before the end of the year. It's a, s a separate project, but uh, we uh, we needed to have OpenXR first 
our, our runtime uh, finished. Um, when will the CAT files be available? So uh, it was a strong internal debate at uh, Lynx. We had this debate about the CAT files of the headsets. Um, so I know that some of my competitors already have all their CAT files online, <laughs> but um, we, uh, we first wanted to share them uh, once the devices are shipped, but um, because there are many people, um, I would say, uh, having an eye on our company, we are going to opt for a system where you first need to ask and sign an NDA with us to get the CAD files. But you certainly can access them if you want to. If you're, example, a PhD and you want to work on sensors and add some stuff on top and you need to work with the CAD files of the front part of the headset, we will certainly help you and try to, uh, to give you all the tools you need to, to make this happen. If you're uh, in a company making a headset and you ask for CAD files, then maybe we'll say no. <laughs> so we it, we are going to share an email address on the website uh, saying like you need to share the, the, the project you want to do around the CAD files uh, so we can contact you back. Uh, so it's going to be a per case basis for the CAD files, but we, we want to share, the, share that with you. But it's, uh, it's going to be open, but not free for everyone. So it, we won't ask any sort of payments, but you will certainly need to ask us uh, before using them. Um, so if you order a, a headset and a pair of controllers, you won't need to wait for us to finish the controllers. We're going to ship the headsets uh, at an intense pace, uh, and and then after ship the controllers to to some of the of the users. We had a very low uh, percentage of Kickstarter backers that uh, ordered the the controllers. So it's not. I mean, it's not going to be very costly for us to make a separate shipment for those orders for the controllers. Um, is the headset going to work well outside? Yes. I think it's going to behave very well outside. Uh, if you if you ask how well, it's hard to make reports because depending on the brightness level from the sun and and all kind of conditions, six dot can fail sometime. But otherwise, hand tracking and pass through will work ex extremely well outside. I think from what we tested in the office. Um, so it's still going to use uh, LPDDR5 uh, for the eight gigabytes, from what I heard, uh, with the supplier. We are going we, when we're going to change the spec. We'll we'll make sure that we got it right. But it, it's still going to be LPDDR5. Um, does Links can work uh, wirelessly? Uh, so maybe maybe some user didn't understand that Lynx is a, a all-in-one headset it means that it's standalone and uh, in the front part I actually have one of the first units here uh, so all the computing is happening at the front of the headset you don't need a PC to buy your Lynx you can uh, it's like the the latest other headsets it's completely uh, standalone and everything is happening here there is the battery at the back and uh, all the computing at the at, at the front uh, with the with the thermal system, the optics, and all that, um, you can use if you if you need to run heavy games or heavy application, you can stream them from a PC with a USB C cable or over Wi Fi. Um, and uh, today we have something working with CloudXR, but thanks to OpenXR, we're going to also propose other pipelines for users that maybe don't have a expensive Nvidia card. Are you supporting MRTK free? So yeah, we are. Um, so we are supporting MRTK free. The video that I tried to sh to show you, uh, but couldn't decode. Sorry, uh, is based on uh, MRTK free, and I think you can run. I know you can run MRTK two, but it needs some modification in the SDK. But because our SDK is open, you should be able to uh, to make those modifications. We are. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, the the engineer that worked on, on that. Uh, if it's possible, and then we'll write the documentation on our website uh, if you need to support MRTK too. Uh, 
So every day in our office, we have people that come in and I say, hey, Stan, I'm a developer of a HoloLens application or a Quest game, and I need to switch also to another platform because, for example, some developers, if they are kicked out of the Quest store, then they have no revenue anymore because basically, uh, you know, for the Western world, uh, Meta has almost, if not a, a complete monopoly on the on the sales of uh, content. So there is a need from the developer community for uh, another player. And maybe it's not going to be Lynx, but I think we certainly have a, a, a strong play here and uh, we can we can we can completely be this underdog uh, in, in the market, and we're, this is also why we invested in the in the App Store uh, and all that. Um, all right, let's see. If I order today, what would be the estimated delivery date? So, to, if you order today, you um, you the I would say the maximum is going to be March now. Uh, and we are working uh, on reducing that timeline. So worst case, March. Base case is going to be February, January, some, sometimes like that. I know, I know. Uh, but you, you need to understand. Uh, I, I don't know how the others are doing. They certainly have more, um, uh, more pow uh, you know, firepower than we have on the supply chain. But everything is costing more these days. Um, Really, I see the bomb cost rising. I see, uh, you know, the dollar, the inflation, and all that. And I just, uh, I, I just don't understand. Like, we cannot go any faster and uh, guarantee those uh, those prices. So it's 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 it. You know, I, I I'm pretty sure you're seeing, uh, you know, other high end devices that are going to hit the market, and uh, you will be surprised by by the price because everything is just so expensive these days. And trust me, we're really trying to bring down the price of our headsets, but it's going in the other direction because of uh, what's happening. The bomb cost we calculated at the beginning of the year is like 30% less than what we than what we have today. So the price of the headsets might be adjusted uh, soon, uh, and uh, some items are very late. Uh, you need to order them still six eight months before uh, beforehand. And it's very hard to find another uh, source of uh, supply. Okay. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting to read the debate in in the comment section. Uh, okay, so. Trying to see, if there are other questions there. How is the travel case looking? Is that going to be released soon after the headset? Um, yeah. So the we, uh, I mean, soon. Well, yeah. Uh, the travel case is going to be there by Q1 2023. So six months from now. So for us, it's soon, but. Uh, maybe for you it's not, but we, we're still working on this thing uh, and, and it's coming. It's going to uh, probably not use the same manufacturer uh, as what we're doing today for the packaging of the headsets. Probably it's going to to be made in Europe uh, as uh, from, from our latest discussion. Um. Oh, I, I completely forgot to show you something. Uh, it's the latest video I had in the in the folder, but it it didn't play. Um, uh, I hope I hope some people are still online. Uh, wait a minute. All right. So there is there is this um, there is this thing that the the team has been working on. There is a, an engineer at team, uh, Hugh. He, he worked on a system to have a, a mini launcher in apps that you can activate with one hand. It's following your hand and you can get back to the to the home app. It's going to be in all applications. Uh, it's used the same, um, the same uh, thing as other platform. You can use it with one hand. It's pretty convenient, it's working very well. Um, so there is our launcher app and to, you know, uh, to be able to switch uh, between the launcher and other application, you can use this uh, this mini launcher. Uh, 
So just let me, so now he's back in the launcher, but let me get back to the beginning of the video. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see. So this is this is a advanced mockup, it's functional. Uh, maybe the design will change, but basically it's working. And the other video is, um, again, it's a mockup, but it's a very successful, uh, I mean, it's certainly going to be a useful feature for some of our customers is that you can access 2D apps. So this is, um, um, we, we, it's, it's going to be much more optimized on the FPS and all that, but right now we are now able to stream 2D apps. This is, this is the Android settings app, if some of you uh, recognize that. You can stream uh, Android apps in a 3D world. Uh, so any, en any Android package, either if it's 3D or 2D, we can now uh, launch it uh, on the Lynx headset and interact with, uh, with it. So this was a very, very difficult thing to achieve, but it means that we now can launch any, really any Android, uh, existing Android app uh, in 2D. So if you have a productivity app running on Android uh, or you know, anything else really from the, from the store, it's going to probably run uh, well on, uh, in the headset. Uh, so yeah, I, I really I wanted to share that with you. Uh, the, the video couldn't play earlier, but uh, we are really really proud of this feature, and uh, and I hope you you know it's going to be used to to trigger some uh, interesting use case between two D apps and 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 three D uh, environments. All right. Um, does Lynx allow native standalone third-party overlays? Uh, I, I don't. I don't understand this 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 question really. Uh, <laughs> when Lynx November? It's November now for sure. Uh, it's uh, uh, we're, we're right now uh, assembling the the board with the update of the of the chips. So you know there is no turning back now. Uh, the, the the first few hundreds are are started. There is a uh, they're arriving. Uh, they're, 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 we, we'll see them and we'll share photos uh, in October, uh, and then you you will see the first shipments happening in, in November. So Lynx factory tour. When I think you know, we, I really want to bring you uh, to the factory with me and and the team. Uh, we'll be there again in November, but you know because of our competition. Uh, I'm not sure how much we'll share in, about our process, but uh, at least we'll take pictures, like control pictures about what we can share. But uh, yeah, we, we'll do the maximum to, to, to share with you the, the, the factory. Uh, okay. So um, I, I think I will stop taking questions uh, tonight. I hope you had uh, you enjoyed the update. Um, there, you know, there's been a lot happening in the last two months. There is going to be even more things happening for us uh, between now and uh, of course, November. Um, thank you for the, the patience of the community. If I could and if I had the resources, uh, and if we lived in a perfect world where we didn't have any camera issues, any chip supply issue, um, even any issue with manufacturing and, uh, and the world we live in today, we would have shipped this device as soon as the Kickstarter handed. But uh, this is, you know, this is how project, hardware project go. Uh, this is the state of things. We're really, uh, you know, the, the, the t my team, uh, I'm here also to defend my team, you know, they're they're really not to blame either in Taiwan or in uh, or in Paris. The, we really did the maximum to serve the community. Everyone is passionate inside and outside the company. As I told you and shared with you earlier, there are people working at Lynx that participated in the Kickstarter. And um, you know, uh, the mini launcher demo you saw uh, was made by a, a Kickstarter backer. Uh, and uh, it, it's funny because he really wants his headset to uh, 
to feel comfortable and uh, and easy to use. So it's uh, uh, we hope that when we release the SDK, uh, even if the headset don't arrive immediately uh, at the same time, that we start to see some uh, joint efforts between us and the community to really uh, try to bring a, a very very good offering uh, that are not like the other uh, platform and their business model. Uh, I'm very, I'm still very confident, uh, and uh, this is why I'm, uh, you know, putting in so much effort um, and work so late at night, at, at night to share all that with you. Um, I'll see you soon. We'll try to make an update uh, later in October. Uh, in the meantime, everything I said tonight will be available tomorrow on our social media and on our website uh, as an article. And wait, uh, stay tuned for October 10 for the, uh, we'll probably make an update uh, around that time, maybe one or two days after we release the, the SDK here. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you for staying with me uh, tonight. Uh, maybe it's the morning for you if you're in California or somewhere else, but uh, you know, thank you for all that. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll see you soon. And uh, hopefully uh, you'll soon in November, some of you send me pictures with, uh, with your device. Bye.